Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. You are going to learn an efficient way to get smooth edges in your high poly meshes for a quick and clean bake, especially for hard edges and using booleans in your meshes. So uh, this is the final result of a, of a model that I worked on. I did this so quickly and you can gain a lot of time and save yourself a lot of hours of work using just this simple workflow. You can see here the tri triangulation of the mesh like this. I did use booleans and the topology is so terrible, which is hard surface. And you can see here when I disable the normal map, you can see the high poly is hidden and the low poly is, is shown. And when I enable and disable the normal map, I can get some really nice and smooth details, right? So let's go to Maya and I'm going to explain all the workflow and how it should work and what you should do and what you should not and what to avoid before you can start using this workflow. So when you are going to use booleans in your meshes or in your workflow, they are really helpful and time savers especially when you are going to use this workflow everything will be easy everything will be so much quick and efficient especially for weapons or hard surface stuff for example i have this cube like this uh, this model that i talked to you about before for example in this cube i'm going to have some boolean operations first things i need i need to have all right, just I'm going to move this up. Okay. First things you need to consider or put in mind are the subdivision of your primitive objects, which are going to be useful in the cuts of your meshes. For example, a cylinder or a sphere or anything which has a curve or a curvature like this. I'm going to show you a simple example, right? In this workflow, we are going to use ZBrush and we are going to use Dynamesh and Polishing and some techniques. So to be able to get a clean result for our high poly and low poly, just forget about the low poly. We are going to talk about it later. Now we are going to create the main model or the main mesh. So if I use these guys and combine them together and use mesh booleans and use difference you can see here all right we have an additional edge here i'm going to weld this here all right so this is what you will get in dynamesh so when you increase the value of Dynamesh, you will get these edges, all of them visible. So I would advise you to increase the density of your primitive meshes that you are going to use in the booleans operations. So it's okay later for creating the high poly or the low poly. You are just going to select the, like this one by one and hit control delete and you will get your low poly, right? So I'm going to go back here. All right. So I'm going to increase this guy here, like attributes and use, for example, 100 and go here, polysphere and use 100 by 100 like this. Combine these guys, go to booleans and use difference right so when i harden the edges set to face you can see you can barely see the hard edges so it will be a good way for polishing and getting smooth results right so this was the first idea of getting clean uh, high poly results and clean baking right so the second thing is the polygroups. Polygroups are very important. If we don't use the polygroups, it's like we did 
nothing right so make sure all the edges you want to bevel or the edges you want them to, to be smooth you need to cut them first in in this uh, low poly model or the the pre-high poly we can call it right so to do it quickly just go here click on the mesh right and click here on a planar projection it doesn't matter how it looks right and use constraints you can see here select all right just a minute i have so much hard edges i'm gonna go back All right, now they are smooth. I'm gonna use the planar projection, use constraints, and select the edge mode. You can do this on any 3D software like Blender or Cinema 4D or 3ds Max or even ZBrush. You can use the booleans and anything. It doesn't matter. I'm just using Maya here. I can use 3ds Max or any software just to clarify the idea, right? So I'm going to use all and next and use hard. So like this, I'm going to select all the hard edges, go to UVs and click cut UV edges. Now we go to UV editor and you can see here that this guy go to UV mode, select everything and click control U to unwrap everything. And you can see here we are, we are having some kind of overlapping edges uh uv islands i mean you can use Control l to lay out everything and you can use like modify layout and this is the options i'm using world for the prescale and for layout objects non-overlapping and hit apply it doesn't matter if the uvs are not perfect or messy it doesn't matter because all these are going to be Poly groups like this, you can see here when I select the UV shell, it's like smoothing groups in 3ds Max if you are familiar with it. Like this, you can see each one is different. So we are going to have many poly groups here, right? So I'm going to export this guy here. Before we export this, we, can, we should triangulate everything because we have a lot of angles here. Just click mesh and triangulate, triangulate your mesh, export selection and name your file, whatever you want. Make sure smoothing groups is on and reference the assets content, which doesn't matter. Just export it and open ZBrush, go to Z plugin and click on FBX import and import your FBX file which is this one file imported and let's just change this guy to matcap metal 3 i'm gonna click ctrl n and drag it again edit object All right so i'm gonna frame this so you can see here the model is has been exported and you can see all these weird triangles and messy topology so it, it doesn't matter go to polygroups and click auto groups with uv so it's going to create all the polygroups dependent on the uv shells right like this all right so next thing is go to geometry click on dynamesh change the blur amount to zero and don't and don't mess with anything here just click dynamesh to see if the resolution is enough or not make sure to have a lot of density not the density which makes your computer freeze or just an efficient one to get a cleaner result so i'm gonna increase the volume to something like I think 700 hit enter and click on dynamish all right 
<laughs> yeah, boy. All right, so the Dyna mission has been finished. You can see these hard edges and weird stuff going on here and this weird shading. So this is the main problem of using Dynamish. So in this workflow, we are going to see how to get rid of that kind of hard edges in the curves. Now go down to make sure the polygroups are not gone. You can see them here are still visible and working. Go to deformation and let's hide this. Polish by features. You can see this guy here with this small circle. If you enable it, it means the slider will have a small, small affection on your mesh and it doesn't go aggressively with the smoothing. If you untick it like this, especially if you have higher poly count, like 2 million or something which is crazy like this, make sure it's disabled and polish by features and you can see it's smoothing all the weird edges which, which was taken all of the good shade in a way, right? The next thing to do is pretty simple. Polish crisp edges. Make sure you don't go high with it, just a small value and see it didn't do anything. Make sure to disable this here and increase to something like this and that's the final result nice right so now your model is ready to export right so okay let's export it i'm gonna export it as fbx hi cube our file has been exported so now let's go back to Maya. Here we are in Maya. And you can use the decimation tool to reduce this kind of weird topology like this. And we can go back here to the Yangon. And okay, I'm going, I'm using the constraints. Make sure you are not enabling the hard edges make this off and this nothing right so i'm gonna reduce the poly count select edge loop by edge loop like this all right Okay, now click on Control Delete on your keyboard to reduce this and select again edge by edge like this. All right, so that's enough. Now let's go back to UVs. UV shell one, two, three, and all our UV shells are in place. Go to UV editor. Okay, so click on each one. If they are perfect, like these guys here, this one is not. I'm going to use this and scale it down like this. And use cylindrical for this UV island. You can see here it's cylindrical. All the UVs are done and make sure you triangulate it. Okay, everything is on place, right? Mesh triangulate before you export or before you bake, make sure you triangulate your meshes to get nicer results and everything. Export, make sure smoothing groups is on. If you are going to export or bake in, I don't know, Substance Painter, you should enable tangents and binormals or 
you don't need to enable this, just leave it as it is. Because Substance Painter is going to calculate the tangents and binormals by itself. So I'm just going to use these settings here and name this low cube, right? Okay. I'm going to go here to Marmoset Toolbag and import the high cube and the low cube, right? Okay, I'm gonna hide. Let's delete these guys here. Go to high and assign it to high and low to low. Make sure the max offset is a bit higher. And it's already baking, you know. It's already baking. All right, so this is our mesh and you can see here the result is very clean and looking really great like this. It's really awesome. So let's go back to our main mesh. Let's delete this guy and delete this one here. Okay, just delete the camera. So for example, I have a low poly and it's completely done and you did all the UVs and like this, for example, let me show you the UVs, how I did them. The reason why I did this smooth and I didn't do cut here and here and here because they are not 90 degrees because when you zoom in closely, you will get your, you will get some seams visible in your bake. Make sure only you cut your UVs only if it's planar to planar faces like 90 degrees. Let me see here. You can see here the edge has 90 degrees, something like this, and another polygon like this. This is where you should cut. And for these guys, when we want to bevel, this one is not. Let's select continuous edge. This one is not hard. Uh, I just left it hard as as this because of the bevel it's not a perfect uv just for demonstration i can deal with it later so for example i did all the uvs and i have finished and i want to create my high poly so what i do okay just disable this and go back right so i will select all the edges i want to bevel all the edges i want them to be like uh, smooth in the high poly like this one select this guy and this guy here so i can't bevel in maya so mesh display harden edge like this All right now uh, okay before you do the harden edge make sure your original file okay just okay make sure that your original file has a duplicate and i uh, name it for example final low poly like this and hide it and this one should be the high poly to zbrush right high poly to zbrush right okay so make sure you harden all the edges you want to bevel Let's display harden edge or just make some cuts because my will deal, uh, ZBrush will deal with that. I'm going to select the hard edges and go to UVs, cut UV edges to avoid any problems. Make sure you have no overlap in UVs, otherwise you will get some issues. Go back to UV editor, object mode, select your object and layout again, right? Click another layout okay everything is isolated by a hard edge right so okay i'm just making sure everything is on place right now i'm going to it's triangulated also 
I'm going to export the selection and name it hard surface to ZBrush okay export and let's go back to ZBrush Z plugin import and where is the dot in file hard surface to ZBrush right so this is our file and you can see all the weird triangulation and the messy topology all right so let's go to polygroups auto groups with uv and you can see each uv island or each thing here is isolated now go directly to dynamish hit zero and click so you can see which value you need to add if it's already smooth in this value just don't crank it up or go crazy with it otherwise you'll end up rebooting your computer or crashing the program all right i'm just gonna use 1040 maybe like i did because because i did this value and it was perfect and click dynamish <laughs> yeah boy all right the dynamish has finished its job you can see the mesh is completely dynamished and all the uv groups or the poly groups are on place so now let's get rid of these kind of weird hard edges going on here you can see i didn't use here so many subdivisions so the more i use subdivisions the more i get a cleaner result right and a better result so when I use higher subdivisions, I will end up cleaning my low poly model. Like you see here, like selecting edge by edge and deleting. So that would be my final low poly, right? If you are using 3ds Max, things will get a bit easier because you use modifiers. And for example, Pro Boolean, you can use the a duplicate of the mesh and all the all those modifiers you can increase or decrease the subdivision and make it a bit easier and gain yourself more time but it doesn't matter it's just a matter of 15 minutes or so it's better than cleaning your topology by hand and adding edges and creases that's pain in the ass really because it costs a lot of time and we 3d artists are very lazy we need things to be done quickly and we need more time and all right so the dynamish is done go to deformation and make sure polish by groups uh, polish by features that small circle is turned off and increase it slowly and you can see it's smoothing in smoothing all these guys here right so polish by features and everything is smooth so when i'm going to use polish crisp edges remember i have a very small edges here and they are too narrow and close to each other so what i'm going to do here i'm just gonna mask this and click on Control alt and deselect this guy here right all right so i'm gonna just polish the crisp edges of okay just all right just to it's dynamishing again all right make sure your dynamish is, is disabled because if you are going to use mask or hit a small mistake here in the void it's going to dynamish again right so let's go back to deformation and select these areas here like this like this and narrow it and make sure it's not hitting any edge right so now you can use the crisp edge right okay polish crisp edges and that's the value we need for example these guys are getting so much smoothing you can just mask them 
like this. You can also mask these guys and all right. All right, so let's go back and polish by the polish crisp edges and like give this 20 value like this and you can see cleaner result or for example i want to give it a value of let's say all right 25 or 30 okay i will give it 30 like this okay i'm not satisfied <laughs> i'm gonna give it 24 or just 24 all right so i'm gonna invert the mask or click Control i or you can go here to masking if you want to make the work longer and make yourself suffer more just go here and click inverse right like this okay now click on deformation again and polish crisp edges and make this 12 or 11 and your mesh is ready it's pretty clean and looking perfect nice and that's all i'm gonna export high poly to zbrush make sure it exported fbx <coughs> high poly to zbrush right all right the export has been finished file exported successfully now let's open marm set tool bag and delete this guy and the baking is done let's hide the high poly because it was shown and overlapping I'm just gonna give it a different color and assign it here so let's hide it and this is our low poly model with a bake and everything on it let's try different stuff or different bakes for example curvature and bake it and this is the curvature it's really clean and looking awesome right even though i'm using low settings and i'm baking on marmoset tool bag 3 you can get better results than these and it's looking awesome also some guys did ask me about this workflow uh, a guy asked me about the material id how to get a good material material id from using this workflow it's pretty simple just go to zbrush and let's go to polypaint and click polypaint from polygroups like this and just re-export your model and bake the vertex okay just z plugin okay export polygroups as sets polygroups as materials or you can just don't do this just go here to z plugin export polygroups as materials like this re-export your file hit save and replace it all right the file has been exported all right so let's continue because i'm recording i had some issues in importing the model so that was the technique otherwise you can use for your uh, material id you can use here uv shell select and assign a material like this lambert and give it a color like this for example red or for example select the whole material and give it a red material then select uv shell this one and this one and this one and assign a new material choose lambert for example and give it 
a blue color like this and export it as low poly which contain the ID information all right so this is the low poly which has the information use this as high okay okay this should be the low and this should be the high poly and hit bake bake the material ID Let's hit bake and see let's hide this and this is the material id and that's all for this tutorial i know this workflow will really help you and it's really great for gaining more time and it could save you a lot of time because this workflow helps a lot in for example weapons or any any kind of props it, ca it could be useful really for getting more time and getting a lot of control over your edges and getting like some kind of nice and smooth edges on your model and also what i was going to mention uh, for example you have a weapon which consists of small parts you should go in zbrush and do the process for example for each element and for each small piece to avoid like when you for example you have small like screws and and for example gadgets on your model make sure to isolate them and do the process for each one to avoid weird results and to avoid crashes on your program and a lot of that kind of issues right so thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching See you next time in another tutorial. I hope this will be helpful and saves you a lot of time. Thank you so much.